Hello everyone, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com and I'm here to bring you a live paper crafting class because it's Wednesday. It is Wednesday AM on September 14th, 2022. That's when I go live and I am excited. I have these really pretty cards. I have been dying to play with a stamp set called Garden Bird Houses. I bought it a while ago and I never like took the time to touch it. I don't know, sometimes I gravitate towards bundles and suites more so than an individual stamp set and what can work with it. So today I am playing around with the Garden Bird Houses stamp set. So if you like that one, you're going to love this card. Now, I have to go back just a little bit because there was a, a sketch challenge that I proposed to my group of demonstrators and we had a team event last night and what we do is we put that sketch challenge out there and then people who want to can choose to make a card using that sketch challenge and then they share it at the event. So we had lots of different layout ideas, um, not layout ideas, but ideas with that layout. Um, using different products, um, using different banners and all kinds of things. It was really fun to see what people came up with when they saw that sketch. So basically a sketch challenge is a drawn out, like it looks like a pencil drawing or whatever, of just kind of the shapes and the, and the orientation of what your card could look like. So I'm going to show you the sketch challenge that our group looked at. So we saw this one from TSG. It's number 222. Um, and so that was what we were kind of inspired by. And then what we did was we just took our own products and came up with stuff. So that is the basis of how I started designing this card. I wanted to use the garden birdhouses and I wanted to use that sketch challenge. So we are going to, um, what are we doing? We are going to use the Splendid Day um, designer paper, which is gorgeous. Um, we're also going to use the Timber 3D embossing folder and we're going to use a couple other things. We're using uh, the Stylish Shapes dies because who doesn't want those? And then the banner pick a punch. Um, a big welcome to all of you and a big welcome, especially to those of you that are new to my channel. I hope that you stick around and, and um, enjoy what I have to share. Also, thank you so much to Trisha Josephs, who is my moderator on YouTube. So while we are live, Trisha Josephs, with the little wrench symbol next to her name, she is the one who is moderating all the comments and answering questions. If you want to tag her, you can. You just start typing the A with the circle around it, the at sign, and then immediately, without any spaces, T-R-I-C-I-A, her name will come up, Trisha Josephs, and then your comment will stand out to her because you've tagged her. Then I want to also um, say hello to Lisa Marshall. She's on Facebook. And so she's watching the comments while we're live on Facebook. Now her name doesn't stand out, um, but she's working really hard to read through all those comments because she can't get tagged. Well, she, I guess I guess she could get tagged if you start typing her name, maybe. Um, and anyway, she's there to help you out on Facebook. So once again, I am Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com. If you are seeing any of these products while I am demonstrating and you want them, you can click on my shop button on my website at stampyourartout.com and you can immediately start shopping. How fun is that? <laughs> All right, so let's go down to the desktop and take a quick peek first. Um, I'm using the Garden Bird Houses stamp set, this one right here, and it is on page 96 of the annual catalog. This is what the images look like, fun designs. Um, I love the fonts, the fonts, um, so there's like a real scripty looking one or, or handwritten I should say and then there's more of a um, kind of like a marker font you know, where, it's, where it's kind of like drawn with a thick marker so and then we're also using and I'll just show you from this mini catalog the splendid day papers which is part of a suite and you pretty much want the whole suite anyways but the papers are really pretty so let me show those to you and then we'll go over to the supplies and a big welcome. I'm, I'm loving this. People are saying hello. They're saying hello to Trisha and Lisa. Very fun. Hopefully your weather is good where you're at. Um, we are having a beautiful um, day today and the past couple days have been really gorgeous. You can see I do not have 12 by 12 pieces of every sheet in this pack. I have been really enjoying these papers. They are um, kind of foily on one side and then the other side is not it's just basic um, regular kind of matte paper but you can see um, that it's a white kind of like a it's not really embossed but it's um well sort of 
some, I guess that you can feel the raised um, white areas a little bit. So we'll just call it white embossed, white embossed on foil. And the colors, um, like there's different color foils. Like this one here is Sahara Sand. This one is Soft Sea Foam. Those are the two that we're gonna be making. Uh, our, our first card with and then you can see on the flip side we have kind of a pool party color here and then a Sahara sand again um, these let's see here what else did I pair up together I paired these two up together so you have like a pinkish and a goldish side and then you have your um, I, I guess that's fresh freesia so it's kind of a pinkish purple and then we have this um, it, it can almost go with parakeet or granny apple green and we'll take a look at the actual colors in just a second. And then we have kind of like a coppery and sort of like a champagne-y color. Um, on the flip side, we have uh, petal pink and a calypso coral. I use the, the, the paper side, not the foil side, for my third card. And here we have the colors written down. So calypso coral, copper, fresh freesia, pink, petal pink, pool party, Sahara sand, and soft sea foam. So if you are looking to coordinate cardstock or inks, those would be the recommended colors. Whenever you see um, colors listed for a um, designer paper, that's just giving you a great um, kind of lead into what else you can get to go with it. So let's bring in the card and then I'll show you the supplies. So this is the card that we're gonna make first. You can see I'm using the foil side of each of these. I've got some white glittered organdy ribbon through here and then three different color card stocks. And you might be surprised I didn't pick soft sea foam for my coordinating card stock. Instead, I chose um, mint macaron, which is kind of a deeper green. And then I'm also bringing in a bluish color, which is coastal cabana. And then I used Bermuda Bay and Pool Party for the blends markers because we don't have a Coastal Cabana um, blends marker. So if you use the two together, like the darkest of the Pool Party and the lightest of the um, Bermuda Bay, you can kind of get that Coastal Cabana look. And then this one here is Sahara Sand, which matches the color here, but my ink is a little bit deeper. It is the... Uh, um, Oh shoot, now I have to go to my supplies. Hang on, let me just pull them up. Gray granite, gray granite, that's the one. Um, and after we make that card together, I will show you the, um, the other two cards. And you can kind of see a peek of them at, in this photo here. So uh, again, um, it is September 14th. So you can see that whenever you get one of these PDFs, you can always refer back to that post and that name of the post, the Garden Greenhouse of Splendid Day Cards. Yes, you will be able to get this PDF once my blog post goes live um, a little over an hour at 12.15 p.m. Central Time. You can visit my blog at stampyourartout.com and the blog post, which will include photos, like more photos than just this, um, the supplies, the measurements, clickable supplies where you can see the images of the supplies and click on them. Um, this video will be embedded into that post. So everything will be right there. Okay. I love Coastal Cabana too, Cindy. I agree. It's a very nice color. Um, there are the measurements. Now these measurements for the first card are going to be slightly different than how I did my second and third cards that I'm going to show you. Um, I kind of regretted not putting this extra little fold into the card base. And so I went back and I redid the first one. And so I'm recommending that you do that to the other ones if you wish, um, just because I love fun folds and we might as well put an extra fold in, right? I do want to also point out that I forgot to list the whisper, I'm sorry, basic white uh, thick cardstock in the supplies. Silly me. It's a basic, yeah, it's not listed down here in the cardstocks. So, <laughs> oops. Um, all of the supplies that are listed through this dimensionals, those are all the ones that we need for the first card. And then these are extras if you're going to make the other two. And they're kind of separated, like um, second card, third card kind of thing. Um, I do list every single supply that you would basically need except for like a cleanup pad and the, and the clear blocks. Um, because if you are a beginning crafter, I want you to know that some of these things are important to have, like a paper trimmer and a bone folder and that sort of thing. But you can slowly build up your supplies. Those of you that have been crafting forever, 
Um, you can kind of, you know, ignore the last few things, which are usually the tools and adhesives and stuff. Okay, let's get to the desktop. I'm ready. Alrighty, so let's cut our card base. Uh oh, it looks like we have some spam email coming through. I'm guessing Trisha will take care of that though. <laughs> All of a sudden I look up and these emojis are everywhere. Oh goodness sakes. Um, yep, gotta love it. So we are going to cut our cardstock in half. I'm sorry, not in half. We're gonna cut it this way. Um, originally I just cut them in half because I had card bases that went like this, right? Just a basic card cut in half, fold it over, and that's how I got the, the original card bases. But we're gonna add a pocket. So we're gonna turn it this way and we're gonna cut at five and a half inches. Okay, that is usually the, oh, that's usually the, um, oh, now you can see that card. <laughs> it's not a surprise anymore. That's usually the height of most of our A2 size cards. We, we sell the envelopes that fit that, four and a quarter by five and a half. So we've cut it at five and a half inches this way. So we do have a scrap of white ready for when we do our sentiment piece. But yeah, you're going to use up a little bit more than a half a sheet of white cardstock. Now we're going to put the, the score lines in there and we're going to score at four and a quarter and then we're going to score at eight and a half. And eight and a half by five and a half is usually again like the card base that I mentioned. We're going to trim this down just a little bit. Hi Sandy. We're going to trim this down. We're going to trim it to ten and a quarter inches. So we got our score mark, score, score mark, and then we're gonna trim here. Now you could certainly leave that longer if you want to. You don't need to trim, but because of where my ribbon is positioned in the card, uh, um, on the card front, I kind of want it to also um, position in the back right at the edge of this piece because we're gonna fold it inward like this, and this is gonna form a pocket. So we're going to have the ability to have a place for money or a gift card. It's a simple, simple fun fold, right? Um, it's beyond the basic, but it's right up there with like super simple fun folds. Let's grab our bone folder. This is one of those tools if you're a beginning crafter that is not necessary, but it's oh so nice to have. And because I want this pocket to really lie flat, I'm going to break those fibers in both directions. So we're just really making sure that that's going to stay flat. And then we're going to fold in this way. Okay, so we've got our card, card base ready to go. Let's bring in our designer papers, which I've already pre-cut. I've cut this one too, and I'm cheating because I'm looking over at my sheet there. This one is two and three quarters <clears throat> by five and three eighths. And I made it five and three eighths because I wanted just a tiny white border all the way around. And boy, this is far away from you guys now, isn't it? There we go. I wanted just a tiny border all the way around. And this piece is one and a half by the same height, five and three eighths. Okay, so they're gonna overlap slightly just because I didn't wanna risk having a gap in there. You could certainly have a gap if you want to. So let's add this to our card front. And I'm just using seal adhesive, and so you just press, pull, and lift. Like that. It's as simple as that. And those of you that remember um, snail adhesive and you got used to that, then they changed it to seal adhesive, um, there was a, a learning curve for, <laughs> for many of us. In fact, some of you may be like still struggling with seal adhesive, but you have to keep on practicing with it. I promise you it will get easier. And I just realized I want to make sure, yes, we've got the pocket on that side. So I'm just making sure I have the same white border on those three sides. And then I'm also making sure that where they overlap, they are not going to show, you know, that designer paper of the green underneath. So there is that. The next step is to do some piece preparation. So I've got these pieces cut and these can really be any length or width too. Okay. They don't have to be anything specific. Um, 
I looked at that sketch and I said, this is what I want my measurements to be. But really, it can be anything you want. All right. Okay, so we're going to bring in the banner pick a punch. The banner pick a punch can punch your end of your paper this way, or it can go like kind of a point. Okay, I like this one the most. I use that one all the time. I've just unlocked the bottom. This is a little button that holds it closed. And when you push it this way, it opens it up. The springs open up. You want to put your paper in here. Most people think they have to put it in here. It looks like that's where you'd put it, but you don't. You put it in the other end, the closed end. We'll start with this piece and we're just going to slide it and you'll notice that we have these channels here. So we have a one inch piece that's Sahara sand. This piece is three, um, three quarters of an inch and you can even get a little narrow half inch um, piece of cardstock going through there. I'm using my three quarter inch and I'm pushing it all the way to the back keeping my cardstock aligned in between those little areas. So I've pushed it all the way to the back. You can even turn it over and check to make sure it's centered. Sometimes it gets off a little bit. And then you just push this part together and that piece punches out. So now we've got one banner almost done because I say almost because we're going to emboss it too. Okay. Then we're going to push this one in all the way to the back and then line up those two edges. And sometimes if your cardstock is a little over an inch, mine is probably like a 60... 64th over an inch. I might have cut it a little bit too big because it doesn't press right down in there, but um, it's okay as long as you can get it to guide between those two edges. Flip it over, check the back, then press this part together. This piece is wider though, so I am going to recommend that you don't use the punch. If you use the punch, you might get it kind of off. So instead, we're going to punch those first two pieces and then we're just going to line this one up like that, center it, grab our snips for our paper, and just give it a good trim. So we're going to trim by following the lines of our other punched piece. Okay, it's a simple, simple um, design, but that way it flows. It has the same indent as the other banners. Let's bring in a couple things that we need for the stamp and cut and emboss machine. Now, if you are a beginning crafter, you may want to wait and not invest in the set because it's a pricier tool. It's called the Stamp and Cut and Emboss Machine. We do have a mini boss, which is a smaller version of it. I'm going to show you the larger version. Um, these are called dies. Oops, not that. <laughs> and these are called embossing folders. And you can use both of these tools in this machine. We're going to be using uh, this die here, which is the third one from the largest or the fourth from the smallest and then we're going to be using the timber 3d embossing folder it's 3d because it really will put a deep emboss into your cardstock um, it will give a good deep impression and this is the look that we're going for right here so let's take those two pieces aside this die by the way is from the collection called stylish shapes if you're loving the folders and the magnetic sheet that I store them on, I do have those in my favorite extras portion of my blog. So you just visit my blog and you're going to go to my favorite um, extras under the shop tab. All right, let's bring in the machine. And the machine comes with all of these plates. Okay, let me click that off of there here. All right. We've got the machine, and then we've got our, our base plate, our die adapter plate, a couple cutting mats, and then our um, mat that we need for when we are 3D embossing. Okay, let's do the 3D embossing first. For that, you just need the base and this gray plate, along with your embossing folder, and then whatever cardstock you're going to emboss. And we're going to do the mint macaron piece and I like the grain of the wood going that way but you can certainly do it the other way if you want to. They should be on your wish list Melanie. Those dies, the stylish shapes dies are really really great basics. Um, <laughs> Melanie just said she wants the stylish shapes. Okay now we're going to put our embossing folder onto our base plate with the crease or the hinge part of our embossing folder 
going into the machine first. This will go on top just to protect the plastic part of our um, embossing folder. And then when you crank, you're going to feel kind of that pressure because it's going against um, the the hinge. But a, another reason why we want to send the hinge in first is because it's tapered. You see how it comes to, oh now I have to adjust my cardstock again. See how it's tapered? It kind of comes to a point there. It helps to lead it in. If you send your um, embossing folder in this way, you're going to have to go over a big hump, a big hill. Plus, it kind of puts a lot more pressure onto your embossing folder, which I think I mentioned already. I talk a lot. Okay, crank it through. <laughs> and now you'll hear that little pop because it is ending. And if we open this up, you'll see that wood grain. There we go. Very fun. And on this one, I feel like this is the correct side. Oops, here, let's zoom in. I feel like this is the correct side and this is the incorrect side because this has little tiny dots here and there. And I feel like the grain has more dots going inward than dots going outward, if that makes sense. So we're gonna use that side. We'll put the embossing folder away, we're done with that. And now let's bring our stamps in because we have to stamp. Let's do here, let's bring our gray granite and our stamps and our stamps are photopolymer so they are totally clear see-through you can see exactly where you're going when you stamp you peel away your plastic sheet and you can grab your stamp and I'm just going to put it so that the stamp portion is downward and the um, flat edge is going upward we're going to use that one we're going to use the little tiny bird and then a sentiment piece that is going to go on the inside of the card. Now, I still love using my extra piece of plastic on top here, and I just store it like that. But you can also put your um, stamps and store them right against the cover. So you do not have to um, keep the plastic pieces if you don't want to, because these will cling right to the cover. I don't know why. I just I like having my loose pieces of plastic to take out. <laughs> All right, I'm bringing in some clear blocks. The clear blocks are not listed on the supplies, but you can you can get those in the online store. This is block D, block uh, B, and A. Okay, there is one in between that's a size C. These are just the ones I chose. And if you have just block D, you can use that on any of your stamps. So you start with the largest block that you would need for the largest stamp. I like to lay my stamps down and then grab them with the block because that way I'm not putting them on and then accidentally making them crooked. Okay, They relax when they're sitting on the table like that and then you just grab them like that and they're ready to go. So, And I also like to mount them at an angle. I think that one's upside down. There we go. Um, I like to mount them at an angle so I'm not looking at the edges of my block when I stamp. All right, let's do our circular piece. Um, I think I was actually going to die cut that first. You can do it either way because your stamps are clear. So you can see exactly where you're stamping. If you had the kinds of stamps that are not clear, the cling mount, then you would want to stamp first and then die cut because it's harder to see where you're stamping. We're going to take this scrap piece of white. We're going to grab our platform our die adapter, which is number two, so one and then two, and then our two cutting plates. We're gonna put the scratchiest one down first. We're gonna grab our paper and our die, cutting side down, and then we're gonna put our least scratchier plate on top of that. When your plates start to wear out, your scratchiest one is gonna wear out first. You can toss it, you can get refill um, plates, and the one that you've been using on top can then become your bottom bottom plate, okay? Because this one does get imprints on it, as you can see, and sometimes I forget and I die cut on it, but it's it does get kind of worn out a little bit. Now there we go. We've got our stitched edging around the outside, and also I love these dies because they also create a little stitching, and I'll zoom in so you can see that better. They create a little stitching outside of where you cut. So if you'd rather use your die as a whole rather than as a layer, 
you can do that and you still still get a decoration either way all right putting this to the back of the room let's stamp let's bring in our gray granite again this is our not not sahara sand but it's a slightly darker kind of gray it's a little warmer sahara sand is a warm brown uh, or warm gray um but it's it's not as warm as this one this is almost like a brownish gray okay i just like it i just i think the color is a little bit deeper now we're going to stamp this bird but we're going to set it right on top of the h so it's got its little feet and we're going to connect those feet right to the H so that it looks like the bird is standing on top. Isn't that cute? I love photopolymer in that you can do that sort of thing. You can connect exactly where you want to go. That piece is going to go here in the center. We're going to have our ribbon coming down and through, which will be underneath our circle. Then we've got our banners. Now our banners are going to go on, at least these two, are going to go on first. I'm going to use this one as a guide because it's one inch, one inch. Um, and this one is going to get taped on first. I'm just using um, the regular seal. This one, again, is a guide. I'm placing it right at the bottom of my designer paper. I could also put it right at the bottom of my card if I wanted to. And then this piece, I actually love the look of it coming all the way to the edge of the white. So we're going to go beyond the card or the designer paper and go right to the edge of the white. And now we have that one inch right there. This next piece is going to go on over the top. And it's about a fourth of an inch down. So we've got an, you know, a little gap that's kind of even there, but they're overlapped. And then this one will just go over the top like that. But we're first going to add the ribbon. So you can see how it's coming together. This ribbon here is going to go on kind of backwards. So what I've discovered, and I, I don't know if it's true or not, but I feel like the glitter on this ribbon is sort of softened a bit. Um, you don't see the brightness and the color changes as much if you look at the back side. So here's the front side, where, and you can tell it's the front side because it kind of curls in that direction. And then this is the back side. You can also tell it's the front side because the glitter is sitting on it. Um, this ribbon actually does have a front and a back side. The glitter, if you're going to flick it off, you'd flick it off from the front. The back side, there, it's just smooth. It's softer. You can feel um, no roughness from glitter at all. So we're going to have the back side as our front, okay? All right, let's do a little bit more work for um, the this piece, this piece, and this piece before we add the ribbon, though. So I'm going to bring in those blends markers that I talked about. We're going to use the darkest of the pool party and we're going to use the lightest of the Bermuda Bay to kind of get that coastal cabana feel. All right. I know we don't have coastal cabana. We used to when we had blend abilities. I think that's what they were called. They were our old blends markers. So if you have those, you probably have coastal cabana. And we're just coloring in our bird lightly with some light um, with the dark pool party. We'll come in with our light Bermuda Bay. And we'll just do a little bit of blue down here and a little bit of blue by the neck. And so far, it doesn't look like I did a very good coloring job. Okay, but we are going to blend those colors together. So I'm going to go back to my light color. And I'm just going to kind of pull that dark color into the light. Just kind of blending it together. So we have that shaded look now without the stark lines. Okay. On the flip side, you do see a little bit of ink coming through. If that bugs you, you may not want to do any coloring on the inside of your card. Um, my two other samples that I'm going to show you, the other two cards, I do have some coloring that I did on the inside. But I'm one of those people that I don't, I don't care what's on the back side of a card, right? So um, I never, you know, I don't have it on display in a window, I guess was what I'm saying. So nobody cares what's on the back side. All right, you're going to stamp this down, centering it between your middle fold and the outside edge. And we're just pressing it firmly. There's our inside sentiment. And then I'm going to put some seal here and here. And if you want to, you could use a stronger adhesive like the multi-purpose liquid glue, or you could use um, 
uh, tear and tape adhesive or something, but I'm also going to have that ribbon holding that pocket shut. So I'm not too worried about this opening up. Um, in fact, because it's such a wide pocket here, I'm not even going to stick, like normally I take a gift card and I slide it in there just so I know that I've got some room for the gift card, but this is not a real tight pocket. I'll show you what I mean here. So normally I go like that and then take and then push it down so that I make sure I have room. But you can see I did that on this sample here and it kind of sticks out a little bit and I don't want that on this one. So instead I'm going to press it down nice and flat and I got ink on my fingers. Nice job, Rachel. So I have kind of less of a gap there. All right. Let's grab our ribbon. Again, the scratchier side is going to be underneath. So it's about 17 inches of ribbon. If you are a grid paper user, that is about the width of the grid paper. And yes, we still have stuff going on at our house. If you can hear those noises, you might not even hear those noises. I do. Um, we have uh, one of my friends, actually, he's here helping us with our fence. There's always something going on. <laughs> All right, so I've got my ribbon ends, and I've, I've centered the ribbon over where the papers are kind of coming together. And I'm just going to go ahead and do a, a, a knot. And on this one, I'm going to twist it back so that I see the back side of the ribbon. I see the front side here. And when I do this, when I go over the top, this becomes the back side. And what is going to come through here is also, oops, get it through the hole. Get it through the hole, Rachel. There we go. What is also, is also the back side of the ribbon. It's, yeah, anyways. <laughs> you can play around with it. This is not a ribbon tying uh, video. I have done ribbon tying videos, but that's how I got that look where they're both kind of coming out to the side and down. I know, just rewind. Play it again, right? So now I see mostly blue and not as many pink glittery pieces on this card. And that's what I wanted. That was the look I was going for. And I'm not using my ribbon scissors. No wonder why I won't cut. I saved one of my scissors to only use on ribbons. And the other ones I use on paper. Paper dulls your scissors. So if you really want a sharp scissors for ribbon cutting, make sure that you assign one just for your ribbon. Whoops, getting the glitter off and throwing things around. Okay, now this ribbon is adjustable because I did not tape it down when I was tying it. A lot of you like to tape your ribbons down, but I think the advantage, if you can get in the habit of doing it, is you can adjust your ribbon. I can make this knot go up and down wherever I want it to be. So I want it to be kind of in the middle of my um, Coastal Cabana piece here. And this is going to go on top and just kind of sit on the knot. So let's grab our dimensionals. And I use the edges. I hope you guys are using edges of your ribbon too. I'm going to set one here and one here. So I still have the ability to move my ribbon if I want to. I'm going to peel off the release paper on that. I'm not putting a dimensional all the way to the end because I want this to mail without having to use extra postage if possible. If this knot is flat enough, that kind of thing. So I'm going to set this on here, press it down, and then when I put my embellishments over here, they will not have a dimensional under them to make them lift up too much higher. It will still have the look of being raised, but it won't um, take that extra space in an envelope. And I can see I should have trimmed that one. So I'm going to get my paper scissors in here. That is a little long. Hang on a minute. Maybe it's just long at the edge here. OK, there we go. That makes me happier. <laughs> it's like a 64th a of an inch, Rachel. I know. We've used that word twice now. OK, um, now we're going to bring this piece in, and we're going to tuck it. So that's another reason why we don't want the dimensionals right on top of the ribbon is because we wanted to create kind of a gap in there so that this piece can just tuck in there, right? So now we'll put a dimensional here and a dimensional here. And if you want to add dimensionals on top of your ribbons now, you certainly can because we know that we have our ribbon right where we want it. 
So this gets centered going down so that our ribbon is going right through the middle. And on the back side, you can see that that ribbon is right at the edge of our pocket. And that's the reason for the measurements I gave you. <laughs> okay, so now we can tuck our gift card inside and we have a birthday card ready to go with a gift card in it. Let's look at the other two cards. So for my second card, I substituted my gray granite ink for tuxedo um, memento black, the tuxedo black color um, for my, oh, I didn't embellish this one yet. I got to embellish. So instead of using these embellishments, which I still need to add to my first card, these are the brushed metallic adhesive back dots. I'm using the rustic metallic adhesive back dots, which I don't have a whole lot of them left. I guess I need to buy more. Um, so those, and then these colors, parakeet party, love that green. Then we, cause, and now you kind of have something that's close to granny apple green for coloring too. So, um, I'd recommend using the darker and then the lighter old olive together to get that granny apple green look. If you wanted to do that same trick that I just did with the blues. And then you've got your fresh freesia, um, colors. Fresh Freesia cardstock, Granny Apple Green, and Parakeet Party. And those help to create this card. The pink um, glitter on the ribbon stands out more when you have the front side, just like I showed you here, compared to this one. It disappears more, it becomes more bluish. I think you can kind of see, right? Hello, Kathy from Chicago. I was just there this summer in Chicago. Um, okay, so on the inside of this then, we have So Glad You're Here. I do not have a pocket, but again, if you wanna put a pocket, you could just cut it the way I instructed on the first card. And then we have a third card, and on that third card, I used these pieces. Um, I used Soft Suede instead of Gray Granite. Then I used three color blends because you'll see on the inside of the card I did a lot more coloring. Um, on this one, you can see I added the two color, like I added the purple on the flowers. Okay, so a lot more coloring on this third card. I used Petal Pink, Soft Suede, and Calypso Coral. This is Petal Pink and Calypso Coral cardstock here. And then I used, of these two, the Rose Gold um, Specialty Metallic Paper. And then for the embellishments, I used this rose um, gold color through here. And that's how I came up with this card. So this one says, hello. So you have your happy birthday, your welcome, and your hello. And on the inside of this one, I just stamped the birdhouse um, on a stick. So that was fun to color. I love coloring with blends. So we have our three cards. I still need to embellish with this one. Let me do that right now. So we'll grab our brushed metallic adhesive back dots. And I think I used this one. So let me take my take your pick tool, the gummy end, which I've really used up. I need to crank it so I can use more, more fresh stuff. So we're gonna grab a big one and put that right here. It has a very um, Sahara sand color to it. I just think that that's, uh, is very close to Sahara sand or gray granite. Either way, let's zoom out so you can see them all. So those are our three cards, and this is the inside. Let me grab this gift card here. This is the inside of that one. There, now you can see them all at once. Oh, that's really zoomed out though. I have this um, these fun transitions I can do now. I'm gonna try one just for fun, you guys. Let's try this iris one. Okay, so we'll show you those supplies one more time. Ooh, iris. <laughs> and then let's do this one. I don't know, I'm just playing, you guys. Oh, fun. All right, <laughs> so, so those are the cards that we made today. Um, again, the supplies um, will be listed on my blog. They're also in that PDF that you just saw a reminder of. Um, sorry that I forgot to put the white cardstock in the supply list. If I do have time, and I might, I'll try to revise all of that before the blog post goes live. If not, forgive me. Um, 
some things that I want to tell you about before we pick for prizes. Because yes, if you're commenting, you get entered into prizes. So please comment, um, participate in the live. It's always fun to read them. Um, so um, some things to mention. We have a huge sale that is starting tomorrow. So it's called the, uh, what is it called? <laughs> What's the sale called? Why did I even say that? Um, it's called the 24 hour stamp sale. So let me bring you over to the computer screen. This is a, a flyer that you're able to print off if you want to visit my blog. Um, again, at 1215, when the blog post goes live for all of this, you will see information about this 24 hour sale, which begins tomorrow, um, tomorrow at like midnight. So early, early in the morning, 12.01 a.m., right? And then um, you'll be able to uh, download this list. You'll also be able to click over to the website and you'll be able to um, see the information about the sale. I know, sale. Did somebody say sale? 15% off stamps. Look at all these stamps. All of these stamps are from the annual catalog. So it's annual catalog stamp sets only, not including the host stamp sets. Otherwise, every stamp set is listed here. And I will tell you, you're going to have to kind of debate. Do I, if I want to get a bundle, do I want to get the bundle at 10% off or do I just need the stamp set at 15% off? Or is it better to get the stamp set at 15% off and the dies separately? So you got to play around with your numbers depending on if you're, if you're trying for a bundle or not. Okay. Cause it's not including bundles. It's just stamp sets. Um, yes. So lots of them. And I will tell you, let's see if we can find it here. Garden birdhouses. There they are. They're on sale tomorrow. <laughs> so wait for your order. Uh, that would be September 15th. Okay. All right. Um, what else do I want to tell you? I'm going to go away from that for just a second away on my computer too. Um, I already pulled that up. Good, good, good. Um, okay. And I'm going to show you my blog post really quick. Or I'm sure, let's go to the online store first. Let's do that because I want to show you where the sale will be located. All right. So if you're going to go directly to your store, let's say you're a demonstrator or you have your own, sorry about that, or you have your own demonstrator. You're not buying from me, which is totally fine. Support your demonstrator or support yourself. But if you go to the online store, which is stampinup.com, then you're going to probably see it under specials. That's where they typically put specials. Now, we do have other specials going on. Um, we have weekly deals. We have a clearance rack. So if you're looking for bargains, shop tomorrow, not only on the stamp sale, but click on the weekly deals, click on the clearance rack, and you're just going to save some money. It's going to be fun. Let's take a look at the weekly deals because we have an overlap day. Today is an overlap day where you see the weekly deals that were from um, this past week and the ones that are supposed to change over tomorrow, but they there's like an overlap day. So enjoy shopping today if you want to get in on the current weekly deals and the ones that are happening tomorrow. I got this one last week. I am so amazed that I did, like I didn't have the rose gold paper. Why? I don't know. But anyways, check through here. Lots of pretty stuff. Um, lots of fun, creative stuff. Uh, then I'm going to go to my blog really quick and show you where that shop and favorite extras are. So if you are looking for the magnetic um, sheets and the pockets for um, what I use for my dies, click on shop and then my favorite extras and you can scroll and you can see all those goodies that I show that are not stamping up um, necessarily. Maybe things that I use in my business, um, stampin' storage. Um, uh, the the country hive stuff is in here. So there's where those um, sheets are and the folders. So anyways, check that out because there's a lot of great goodies there. Okay. Let's do some drawings. So I'm going to show you prizes that we're going to draw for today. Yes, we do a prize drawing when I'm live. It's fun. It makes it so much fun. Okay. Let us grab the goodies and then I will bring you down to my desktop. Actually, I should be showing you last week's goodies first because we're going to draw those. We're going to draw those names first. So last week's winners um, got to pick. We had two winners last week during the live and we have two more that I'm going to show you now. I know there's a troll, isn't there, Sue? That's OK. Trisha will take care of it. She knows how to block those people. Um, 
So the prizes from last week, and now I can bring you to my desktop. We had a choice of blends marker um, pairs, and then you get a, a couple sheets of mini dimensionals with that. So the two winners that I'm going to announce here are after live winners. They're ones that commented between the live when it ended and this morning. So I'm gonna go over to my computer and pull that up and you will be able to see our winner from YouTube and we just have our first name. So Beth, if you were the one that wrote down fantastic card uh, class today, you are my favorite teacher, thank you so much, um, then you'll wanna reach out to me and this is my email address. So reach out to me at my email address, stampyourart.comcast.net so that I can get your prize to you. You get to pick any of those colors. I will tell you the colors in just a second. And then we have Virginia Wall Engelhard from our Facebook winners. And Virginia, I have seen your name come up a lot. So thank you for supporting me over these past months, years. I don't know, I just recognize your name. So, so fun to see um, someone that's been around that wins. It's so great. All right, let me show you the colors, you guys. And let me get this email address off of here. So the colors for you too, you get to pick from Just Jade, Cinnamon Cider, and the other color is Magenta Madness. All right, and the reason why you have a choice is because one winner from last week did not reach out to me yet. I don't know why. Oh, where did my head go? There I am. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then I'm gonna quickly pull up something on my computer just for me to read because I wanna tell you some names of past winners that have not reached out to me. And thank you, Melissa. My hair is straight and flat and it's actually falling out. So I am going through my natural look here for a while. I'm actually um, you know, enjoying the fact that it doesn't take any time to do my hair. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for saying that you liked my hair this way because it's so not, it doesn't make me, like I'm, I'm getting used to it, but it's not the way I've had my hair uh, for, for many years. Okay, back to this. Winners um, from previous times. Janet K, we missed you. You haven't claimed your blends markers yet. So Janet K, you commented on YouTube last week during the live. And then the week before that, we had a couple winners that still haven't gotten back to me. Um, from YouTube and Facebook. These were both after live winners. And I think you didn't get back to me because um, I think during that live, I didn't have names ready yet or something. I, I don't know what it was. Anyways, um, Darla Zell on Facebook and Margarita House on YouTube. You both won multi-purpose glue and mini dimensionals. And then we had some winners before that. Um, I'm not going to read all the names of the prizes, but I'm just going to start reading names. So if you hear your name, please reach out to me soon because the further back I go in these names, the less chance you have at getting your prize because I will delete the names after a month. So Lynn Beasley, you still can claim your prize. And then this is an interesting name. It was from YouTube, APLJ, AKA T. Um, I don't believe that you claimed your prize yet. Um, Apple Jacks or something like that. <laughs> and then last few days here, you have two more days or something. Laura Montuli uh, Quarton and Cher, du oh, Cher Dugan and Sandy Bauman. Um, that's how far back we're going. We went over a, a month away, so yay. All right, do you see the prizes that are on the table? I hope we got a good look. We've had some current product here and some retired product. I wanna give a big shout out to Judy Duncan. Um, she donated a bunch of prizes recently, including a lot of these and the blends markers. So thank you, Judy, that was so kind of you. Trisha Josephs has announced the prize winners. You get to pick two, Jackie Anderson and Jacqueline Volk. Congratulations, Jacqueline, I just saw you last night. Um, so yes, reach out to me and tell me which two you want. These are felt flowers. This is an embossing folder called Painted Texture. We have this fun stuff, which is great for tool cards, um, tool shakers, also um, for wrapping Christmas presents because it's stretchy and it makes fun ribbons, um, fun bows, I should say. These are fun clips. We've got a couple, like this is, this is current. These are the effervescent elements. These are those things that went into the um, gumball machines. We have some fun, beautiful ribbons um, in colors. Peach Parfait, 
um, what was this color called? Baja Breeze. Do you remember that one? And then we have another um, color, Pink Pirouette. Such a pretty green. I know, right? Thanks, Judy. I love it. All right. So on that note, um, I have the, <coughs> excuse me, perfect partners promotion to share next week. I need some water. Hold on. <coughs> mm. Now my nose is red. I talk so fast that sometimes I, yeah, swallow a little saliva. Okay. Wednesday, September 21st is when I'll be back. And I have for you uh, perfect partners cards that I'm going to be sharing with you. Um, some little twists on note cards with the piggy set. So if you're looking for some cutesy note cards, um, come back next week. Even if you're not looking for cutesy, come back because I try to give tips and advice on paper crafting throughout my, my lives. I hope you all gain some tips and ideas as you watch. Um, 11 a.m. Central Time, September 21st. I think that's it. Please like, subscribe, give me the thumbs up, that sort of thing. It helps my ratings. And don't forget to comment after the live. You get in on another prize drawing. All right. Thanks, everybody. Now I'm going to let you go, and I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye-bye.